Shut up, shut up. It's ringing. Hello? Hello, Sydney. Breaking news in at this hour in a case that involved cannibalism and murder out of Shiawassee County. 50-year-old Mark Latunsky has been charged with murdering and then mutilating 25-year-old Kevin Bacon, a hairstylist from Swartz Creek, in December. Friends and family of Bacon reported him missing when he didn't show up for Christmas with his family. Police ultimately traced Bacon's steps to Latunsky's Bennington Township home. He had agreed to meet up with Latunsky on dating app Grinder, But police say Latunsky tortured and killed Bacon, who was found hanging from chains in Latunsky's basement. Sounds like a scene from a scary movie. Blood spatter was on the west wall. But these graphic details are part of testimony and the real life case against Mark Latunsky, charged with murdering Kevin Bacon and consuming his body parts after meeting him on Grinder. Kevin Bacon did have a fantasy. And what was that? Um, to be blunt, he wanted. To, uh, he told Latunsky he wanted to be gang raped. According to investigators, that sexual fantasy took place in Latunsky's Shiawassee County home. But Latunsky, who sat motionless in court, also told investigators that fantasy turned into something else. Latunsky stated that Kevin Bacon had explained to him that he had been suicidal in the past. Um, the discussion began. Um, about how the Tunsky could make Mr. Bacon's body disappear. According to testimony, various killing methods were discussed, but one resulting in the least amount of pain was chosen. The Tunsky suggested uh, use the knife to stab um, in the back of the spine below the skull. Um, the Tunsky stated once that idea was suggested, that Mr. Bacon said, okay, do it. But when Latunsky heard Bacon make a noise, he slit his throat. The agreement between Mr. Bacon and Mr. Latunsky was that um, he was going to end Mr. Bacon's life. Um, as a result of ending the life, then he was going to utilize uh, Kevin Bacon's body for dinner. In fact, investigators say a griddle was used to cook his testicles. And that griddle was um, tested for DNA. It was. Kevin Bacon thought he was going to have a fun evening of casual sex with an experienced older man. But in a statement to Fox 2, attorney Doug Corrin from the Public Defender's Office told Fox 2 that this is not a murder case, and he requested that the court add a count of assisted suicide. However, the court declined. Now attorneys will prepare for the case to go to trial. Now, I sat down with Mark Latunsky's husband today to talk about the man he knew and the information circulating on social media about him. Nobody should have to go through this. No parent should ever have to bury a child. Jamie Arnold talking about the parents of Kevin Bacon. 25-year-old Bacon was found murdered inside what was once Arnold's permanent residence in Bennington Township, a home he shared with his husband, accused killer Mark David Latunsky. What is somebody who, when you met, was this kind, gentle soul who turned into this monster. You just, you don't want to believe it. He says he can't believe his husband is charged with murder and mutilation in Bacon's death on Christmas Eve. Arnold says he separated from Latunsky in September and moved out of the house because of his husband's lifestyle. One time I came home and there's somebody there and uh, he tried to get me involved and it was like, you know what, I'm going to make me dinner, I'm going to go to bed. I... <sighs> That's why I had to get out. That's why I had to get out. I couldn't take that lifestyle anymore. And when's the last time you talked to Mark? I talked to Mark on Christmas Day. I had some friends over and I didn't want him to be alone, so I invited him over Christmas Day if he wanted to come. Okay, so... Um... He arrived there in the afternoon, I don't know, sometime around 1, 2 o'clock. He appeared to be normal. He never exhibited any signs that anything was wrong. Jamie said Christmas Day was the last time he talked to his husband, but later told me that his car broke down the Monday before Christmas and he had to get a rental car. 
He said he had no one to call for help. On Friday the 27th, he was here to take my car, the rental car back because it was costing me a fortune. And um, he said, hey, you know what? Why don't you use my car? Um, I, there's a truck, you know, I'm, I'll get that fixed up and I'll drive that and you can drive my car until your car is fixed. Did you take Mark back to the house on that Friday? Yes, I did. Did you go in the house? I did not. I dropped him off at 1030 at night. Um, he came back home. I had to work the next day, and he never once said, hey, why don't you come in? He just got out of the car, left, and I left. Kevin Bacon's body was found the following morning. Jamie says he was interviewed by police. Michigan State Police told TV5 they cannot confirm if Arnold had been interviewed by investigators, but did say there are no other suspects at this time. The police told me that if they thought I was involved, I would have been arrested by now if I was under any kind of suspicion. Why would you think that people would think you're involved? Because of social media. Because of what's out there. All they know is what they see. I understand. They see pictures of us together. They see that we are married, that we live in the same place. They don't know that I love. They don't know the reasons why I love. Arnold says he never met Kevin Bacon and he doesn't understand how or why this happened. He says he's coming forward to proclaim his innocence and clear his name. If you're in hiding, you're guilty. Or if you're in public, you're guilty. If, you know, what you say is guilty, why would you have him over to your house on Christmas? Well, because he was somebody I cared about that I didn't want to be alone on Christmas because... <sighs> How do you stop loving somebody? How do you... Do I love him now? I person he was five years ago. This person, no. Funeral arrangements for Kevin Bacon have been set. A viewing will be held this Thursday from 2 to 4 p.m. and 6 to 8 p.m. at the Sharp Funeral Home in Swartz Creek. The funeral will be held Friday at 11 a.m. Two separate phone calls to Shiawassee County Dispatch last year revealed two separate incidents of men claiming to have escaped from Mark Latunsky's basement. Latunsky was charged with murder and mutilation in connection with the death of 25-year-old Kevin Bacon late last year. The recordings were obtained by TV5 through the Freedom of Information Act. One of the calls was placed on November 25th of 2019 by a man who said he escaped from Latunsky's home and needed help. November 25, 2019, 16, 48, 48. Charlotte County 911. I'm sorry, what's that? I'm trying to escape from some guy who had me chained up in his basement. He had you chained in his basement? Where are you calling from? I don't know. I am heading over this road. Are you I'm on? From here. Okay, hold on one second. Looks like you're on Tyrell Road. I could be. Are you walking? Yeah. Hold on one second. I don't even have shoes on. 3562. You start for Tyrell Road just east of Morris Road. I don't know if I'm trying to go to someone's house. I don't know where I'm at. 67 standby. 3562. Can you start for Tyrell just east of Morris Road? Okay, I'm trying. I'm trying to put out a call. 62. Okay. You can start off for Tyrell. Just east of Morris Road, had a subject that was cleaned up in someone's basement, just fled the residence. He got on foot. Is he after me? Hey, Z, I need you to go to somewhere safe. If you can run up to somebody's house. Where are you at right now? Are you getting are you able to get away? He's running towards the house. This guy's trying to come after him. He's trying to get further. Okay, I need an address where you're at. I'm trying to get it. What's your address? I'm on the phone with a cop right now. Where are you at? What's their address? I need their address. He won't give me the address. Okay. <laughs> 
Can you tell me what? I need their address. What What is your name? My name. Are you outside or inside somebody's house? I'm trying to find someone to help me. Are you in the road? I have some state troopers that aren't very far away. I don't know where I'm Are you in the yeah. Where are you at right now? I'm on um, a white house across from like a barn. Okay, are you close to the road? Can you see an address on the mailbox? Yeah, I'm too far away from the mailbox. I'm sorry? I'm too far away from the mailbox. I need you to give me an address so I can send the troopers to Okay. Look for a mailbox. Okay. Can you see a mailbox? Are you on the road? Yeah, I'm on the road now. 6, 2, and 12. He's running down the road. I'm trying to get an address for a mailbox or something. So I'm trying to be careful. Can you just see a mailbox and tell me what, what the address is? Uh, 910 W. Nine one zero. Yeah. I think he's in front of nine ten West Tyrell. Is that nine ten Tyrell? I'm on the call. Let me talk. Can I talk to whoever you're talking to? that you were at? Um, it was not even a mile down the road going, I don't know what way. I see the trooper. Okay. I see both of them. RV is where I'm at right now. Okay, can you? Okay. Okay. Out with the trooper? No, but I see the trooper right there. He just, yeah, trooper is right here. Okay, go ahead and talk to them, and I, you're gonna have to point out where the, the house is at that you're in. Okay. Okay. All right. Go ahead and talk to the troopers there. Okay. So right. hang up. Yep. You can hang up with me. Okay. Right. On an unusual encounter in November involving Latunsky's neighbor, Michael Parks. I hear a pounding at my door at four in the afternoon, and I jump up. My dogs are barking like you probably hear, and this kid has his his face covered with a rag and a phone to his ear and he's like help me help me he's after me he's after me just scared to death out of his mind this scene played out on park's front porch just a few houses down from latunsky's home on terrell street in bennington township where bacon's body was found saturday morning he's bleeding all over the place there's blood on my door 
a gentleman pulls up in my driveway in a silver SUV, and he gets out, and he's wearing the same getup this guy's wearing, which is a leather skirt and a couple of belts crossing her body, no shoes on, no shirt on, it's 40 degrees out. Park tells TV5 that the man was Mark Latunsky. He says Latunsky was trying to, quote, calm the situation down, saying it was a misunderstanding, but says the victim's reaction told a different story. This kid grabs my arm and clutches behind me, keep him away from me, keep him away from me, just scared out of his mind. That's when Latunsky left and police arrived. There's no record of charges being filed from this incident. Parks says that the victim told police that what the two were involved in was consensual. Parks also says both the first victim and Kevin Bacon have purple hair and the same body type. Similar looking people. Maybe he had a certain type. I don't know. It's creepy to think about. This followed an incident on October 10th involving a different man. Hey, well, I see 911. Where is your emergency? Um, Okay, I'm going to get you help. Are you walking down the street right now? Yes, ma'am, I am. I'm passing a barn. It's all beautiful here. You're passing what? A barn. I don't know what street I'm on. Can you pay me? Okay, it looks like I can. What's your name? Did you say Yes, ma'am, I did. How old are you? Okay. I can't believe her. I don't know where I am. I don't, I don't know. Like, I never ever had anything like this happen. I don't know whether he drugged me. I don't know. I woke up in the fucking basement. Okay? Chilling in the basement with a leather thing around my ankle, and I cut it with the butcher knife that I have in my freaking hand. Excuse my French. Okay. Do you and have anything on you right now? Basically, um, I have my phone. I'm sorry, guys. Are you carrying anything? Uh, but I wasn't, and so I see a police officer, and I see a police officer, I get blown. And so then I don't trust that he's not walking up because I got lost, and I don't even know if I'm headed towards his house or not. That's why I'm dialing 911. Self more so today. I would have just kept walking until he made road, but I'm lost. So I don't even know if I'm headed back towards his house. I woke up in a basement and his chains to something, so he cut the chain off. I cut the leather strap that had the chain. What are you wearing? I am wearing walk shoes, a black hoodie, Jordan. 3513, send that to me as well. Okay. I, I just want to get out of here and I want to go home. I don't even care about the legal case I was here for. I'm sorry, I can't help them. I want to go home. Okay, all right. And listen, I've got help on the way. What were you here for? <laughs> I'm, I'm a volunteer court advocate. I came here to help them to see a community. And I was supposed to meet him then at the bus station. I met this guy. I'm by. He was cute. He hit on me. I don't know. We went out to the car. We dropped. Uh, we went to the store. I had a soda. I woke up in the basement. Okay. He obviously drugged me. Okay. When I get a trooper close to you, I'm going to need you to put that butcher knife down, though. Oh, that's not an issue, sweetie. We're going to fly into the woods. Okay. Your officer is in no danger. I've been a public You don't need to throw it in the years. woods, but but I just don't want it on you. Is there anything else on you at all? Just, um, I don't even know if I have my cigarettes. <laughs> okay. And you don't have a bag or anything else? No, I don't have my bag. Okay. Okay. I'm going to switch this to my wallet and get my hoodie. Okay. What's your milk? Yes, yes ma'am, and that's something I don't tell anybody. I mean, you can, if you can run me, you can check me out. You're an advocate. I'm sorry, I'm nervous. That's but okay. Over, over 26 years at Silver and Carlton Avenue, Central Ice with New York. All my friends told me, not, you don't go where you're going to Detroit to help people. What's wrong with you? You think people need help? Look at me. You're away from Detroit, you know. You know, sweetheart, I got okay. along. I was supposed to be meeting these people in Flint. I met this guy, you know, and he seemed like a nice guy. He points outside like he wanted to talk. I got outside. He goes, oh, no, I didn't just start shooting back. He was cute. 
I'm going to work. 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 I'm going
I think this is a cop because that looks like an extra bright light, so I am now putting this down. Okay. I am unarmed. It is on the guardrail. I am not armed. Excuse me, we're putting that knife on the guardrail. I am not armed. Okay, thank you. It's over here. He sees you. He sees you. Okay. I just want him to know I'm not armed. He knows. I'm not armed. He knows. Yes, sir, I am. I'm not armed. I'm just really happy to see you. No, sir, you do whatever you have to do. You're the police. Stand in front of my car. Whatever you need, sir. Okay, I'm going to hang up on you, okay? Yep, he'll take good care of you. Police also say both men declined to press charges. In Shiawassee County, Jonathan Jackson, WNEM TV 5. A disturbing new twist tonight in the case of an accused cannibal killer. Another man coming forward saying he also was a victim, a victim of Mark Latunsky at his Shiawassee County home. 7 Action News reporter Jennifer Ann Wilson with what's in this new lawsuit that reads like a scene right out of a horror movie. Police have said that the suspect met Kevin Bacon through a dating app and now we're learning that other men may have been tricked with the promise of a romantic encounter. It turned out to be anybody's worst nightmare, something out of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Alleged cannibal and killer, 50-year-old Mark Latunsky has a master's degree, four children, and lived in a beautiful home. From outward appearances, he was a professional, professional man, which is all the more scary. This is like all the serial killer, you know, Bundy, Dahmer. In late December, police found 25-year-old Kevin Bacon in Latunsky's basement deceased with body parts missing. Police say Latunsky admitted to eating him. He had cut off his uh, testicles and eaten them. Uh, so, I mean, this, it could have been my client. It could have been Mr. Carlson very easily, and I think it would have been. Attorney John Marco says his client, James Carlson, was held captive in that very same basement just two months before. He was tied up um, in the basement, left there in the basement. A lawsuit recently filed says when Latunsky had seemingly fallen asleep, Carlson used a butcher's knife to cut himself out of the leather straps used to tie him down and escaped. It was like escaping out of a horror movie um, and called the police and tried to escape town. Carlson had traveled to Michigan from New York in hopes of a romantic encounter, but now he's suing his alleged captor. My client is still really <laughs> I mean, this isn't something that like you get over um, being tied up in a serial killer's basement. Latunsky has been found incompetent to stand trial in the case of the murder and mutilation of Kevin Bacon. James Carlson never pressed charges, but we don't know. But we do know that what happened to Mr. Carlson was wrong. Um, and we do know that uh, he deserves some type of justice. Even if they win this lawsuit, he says there's no guarantee the plaintiff will ever pay up, but he does hope that justice will be served. This is for Local 4 News at 11. Mark Latunsky is the man at the center of that case. He's been rushed to the hospital tonight. He is the Michigan man who made national headlines after being charged with the murder of a man he met on a popular dating app. Mar McDonald is live downtown tonight. Mar, the suspect in this case was found unresponsive in his jail cell. Well, that's exactly what we're hearing from police, Kimberly. They are confirming for us tonight that Latunsky was found unresponsive in his cell and has been rushed to the hospital where he's getting treatment. He has been behind bars ever since and has apparently been, according to police, on a hunger strike. He collapsed tonight in his cell. Back here alive, police got there in time. He was taken to the hospital where we understand he has been treated and has been returned to his cell tonight in Shiawassee County. He has entered an insanity plea in this case and is in the process of getting several mental competency exams. Latunsky was found not competent to stand trial in late February. He will remain there until he's regained competency. And then once that happens, he'll be brought back to the county jail 
and the case will proceed. Corwin tells us Latunsky was supposed to be transferred to the facility months ago, but there was no space ready for quarantine in today's COVID-19 world. Once the isolation area was set, it paved the way for Latunsky to head to the facility for treatment. My best guess is because uh, the hospital doesn't inform us of what they're going to do, but on my experience, it's a combination of, of therapy, counseling, and medication. Corwin said moving Latunsky with no notice to the public was for the security of all involved. I feel for the family. I do understand they're grieving, and um, I'm sure probably the prosecutor's office knows that he has been transported out now. We'll probably contact the family and let them know. James Felton, WNEM TV5. Kevin Bacon's family is aware of Latunsky's transfer. We spoke with them last week about how the pandemic has delayed their fight for justice, as well as the delivery of Kevin's headstone. The Shiawassee County House at the center of a horrific murder is now under new ownership. The foreclosed home of Mark Latunsky, the man police say killed 25-year-old Kevin Bacon, went up for auction today. Fox 47's Christiana Ford has the story. Most everyone here, obviously, for the Latunsky property, an ongoing murder investigation and a foreclosed home boiling down to this. It's Whoever's interested, come on up and we'll show you the opening bid. All right. A room full of bidders, like Mark Beatty, all eyeing the keys to the house where police say Mark Latunsky murdered 25-year-old Kevin Bacon. That's a nice looking house. It's a brick home. It has a textured steel shingles on it, a little cupola up on the top of the roof. Looks like there might be a couple acres or so. It's a little different because it's kitty corner from the cemetery. Now this home selling for $101,733 and some change. The four bidders not even able to see what it looks like inside. I am friends with someone who actually cleans up bodies and doesn't mind the gory, like the glory, and neither do I. Like I'm fully down and I heard that the house had trap doors inside of it. The winner, a third party bidder flying in from Las Vegas with the Shiawassee County Sheriff's Office not able to share any information on what the house will be used for or who bought it. The man accused in the murder and mutilation of another near the end of 2019 is now heading to trial. Thanks for watching the News at 5 tonight. I'm David Custer. And I'm Meg McLeod. After being found mentally fit to stand trial for the murder of 25-year-old Kevin Bacon, Mark Latunsky appeared in court today. And new horrifying details about that alleged crime came to light. TV5's Scott Walsh check has more tonight and we want to warn you some of the details you are about to hear are graphic and may be disturbing for some. Kevin Bacon's murder was shocking, grisly and ritualistic and new details coming out in court today are painting an even more disturbing picture of what may have transpired inside Mark Latunsky's home. Pulled my head back and exclaimed, oh my God, oh my God. Um, and that's when Officer Wirtz asked me what was wrong, and I told him to look. The naked body of 25-year-old Kevin Bacon was hanging from the ceiling in a hidden room of Mark Latunsky's home. State Trooper Robert Viviano discovered the false wall that hid the scene. Chains and sex toys were inside the room. Bacon's body was suspended upside down above a trap door. So the trap door had been lifted in an upright position, which exposed the ground. So Mr. Bacon was directly over the dirt. Sergeant Detective James Moore with state police interviewed Latunsky, where he admitted to cannibalism after stabbing Bacon. He went upstairs. Um, he saw that, in his words, it was a new moon. And as a result of that, he normally, Latunsky said that he normally eats Rocky Oyster Mountains, Rocky Mountain oysters. And instead of using the oysters that he had in, in his freezer, he decided to use the testicles of Kevin Bacon. Latunsky even took a photo. It was submitted to evidence. A forensic analyst found Bacon's DNA in the skillet and Latunsky's on the handle. Detective Moore also revealed to the courtroom the suspected murder weapon. I'm holding um, a knife that was located in the dresser drawer of Mark Latunsky's bedroom. The forensic analyst found a DNA match to Kevin Bacon and Latunsky's DNA on the handle. It's 470 trillion times more likely if the DNA from the swabs of the handle of the knife came from Mark Latunsky. Toxicology reports showed an antidepressant in Bacon's bloodstream. Latunsky's public defender Douglas Corwin says Latunsky was assisting Bacon in committing suicide. There is evidence which court said wasn't relevant, but there's also evidence on the record 
of duloxetine, what is an antidepressant. Latonsky told Detective Moore a similar story. However, text messages between the two show Kevin Bacon wanted Latonsky to keep him safe after their hookup. Kevin Bacon agrees to meet up with Mark Latonsky, but expresses concerns that after the sexual um, interaction that he will be safe at all times. The judge is moving the case along, binding the case to circuit court next week.